Welcome back. I am the Electrical Code Coach from electricalexamcoach.com, and this is the electrical question of the day. Let's get to it. NM cables, 10, 3, or larger, can be stapled directly to the bottom of floor joists in unfinished basements. The options were A, yes, B, never, must be bored holes, C, must be 8, 3, or larger, D, must be 12, 2, or larger. And the correct answer is C, they must be 8, 3, or larger. And there's another one that's allowed as well. According to 334.15c, only two 6AWG, so 6-2, or three 8AWG, like 8-3, or larger are allowed to be secured directly to the underside of joists in unfinished basements. Let's take a look at the full code language and then I'll explain exactly what we're talking about. This is the paraphrase code language. In unfinished basements or crawl spaces, if cables are run at angles with the floor joists, it's acceptable to fasten cables only if they're either two 6AWG or three 8WG conductors directly to the underside of the joists. Any smaller cables must either pass through board holes in the joists or be mounted on running boards. What this is talking about here is that if we are installing cables in an unfinished basement or a crawl space and there are the floor joists running, we are allowed to, to staple directly to the bottom of the, the joists cables that are 6-2 or larger or 8-3 or larger directly to the bottom of the joists. This would include larger cables, but it also includes 6-2, 6-3, 8-3, but it does not include 8-2 that would be required to be bored or have running boards. So let's take a look at the rest of this code language and see if we can learn something else. If non-metallic sheath cable installed in an unfinished ba on an unfinished basement wall, so if NM cable is installed along an unfinished basement wall, so we're in an unfinished basement and it's on the wall, it must either be inside of a listed conduit or tubing or be protected per 300.4. So if we are running an M cable Romex and we're in an unfinished basement and we're wanting to run it along the wall. So that means when I come out of that unfinished ceiling and I drop down or if I'm just wanting to run an M cable along the wall, it's got to be in a conduit or tubing. Let's take a look at some of the requirements if you decide to go that route. The conduit or tubing must include a bushing or adapter to prevent abrasion where the cable enters or exits. The cable sheath must extend at least a quarter inch into the box and the cable must be secured within 12 inches of its point of entry to the conduit or tubing. Let me break it down very simply. What it's saying is that if you do decide to utilize this code and run NM cable along a wall in an unfinished basement or coming down the wall, however you want to look at it, you have to, when you enter, enter into that conduit or tubing, you have to use an adapter or a bushing to help with abrasion. Within one foot of it entering that conduit, up top for this example, if you're going up into the ceiling, when it comes down into the wall port part, when you exit the ceiling area and you come down onto the wall, has to be protected, has to be in a conduit or tubing. You're going to put an adapter or a bushing up top to help with abrasion. Within one foot of that connection there, of it dropping into the conduit or tubing, you have to staple it. And then when you fish it down into the box, let's imagine that you're doing a surface mount four square box, at least a quarter inch of the jacket has to come inside of the box itself. That's going to let the inspector know that you didn't pull it out and also just let them know it's there. And it'll quickly let them know if it's 10 gauge, 12 gauge, 14 gauge wire by the color of the insulation in a lot of installations. I am the Electrical Code Coach, and I'm really excited about today's sponsor. The sponsor of today's video is StackMax. How many times have you ever dealt with reels of wire like this? They're broken, they cut you, it's a nightmare for storage. Well, we don't have to do that anymore. StackMax has revolutionized storing, racking, stacking, and pulling wire. And in my opinion, it's the only solution that we need. I really encourage you to pick up two of them. They're made right here in the United States. Pick up one for 12 gauge and one for 10. 
Put your strandeds maybe on the front, your solids on the back row, and then sit there and be ready to pull like a beast whenever the, the, the situation may call for it. You can head over to stackmax.com. That's S-T-A-K-M-A-X.com, and you can save 10% if you use the coupon code COACH. I am the Electrical Code Coach, and my bargain is that these videos will add value to you, and you will in turn add value to others. Let's get to it. 